impulse has to meet, the, it, like it has to reach a certain inertia, and if it doesn't make it over that hump, over that hill, the impulse just stops here at the axon hillock. It's, it's a bit of a gatekeeper that way. So if there is uh, sufficient electrical changes to carry what's called the action potential through the next phase of the neuron, then it goes into what is lovingly referred to as the axon. So it travels down the axon. <laughs> is insulated with myelin. So this is this, I want to say it's like a fatty tissue that works like the same way that insulation does in your house. So myelin surrounds the axon and it keeps the electrical impulse, the signal, the action potential from sort of leaking out all over the place so that it can carry its charge to the next part of the neuron. So again, this is my, how do you spell this? I'm pretty sure that's right, myelin. And it surrounds the entire axon, insulating it. And when you have a B1 deficiency, like I do, then your myelin, it, it sort of wants, you know, like I don't have the best myelin, and that makes everything harder on your body. There's, there's several things that can affect uh, the quality of your myelin, and you want good quality myelin, and those same things often affect the mitochondria, which is just like a double whammy. You're just going to be extra super tired if your myelin and your mitochondria are not working so hot. So that's where I live. Moving right along to the uh, terminal buttons. So these little guys are what we see up here, right? And so at the end of these terminal buttons, this neuron is going to connect with a new receiving neuron. And if there is sufficient neurotransmitter activity in the synaptic gap, the entire process will start again. So this area right here, like I said, it's called, well, it's got a couple different names. It's called the axon. Wanting. 